There are nine roller coasters across Walt Disney World's four parks, and I'm gonna try and do them all in one day. Hello, ma'am fam, and welcome to another ride challenge. Today, I'm gonna attempt to ride all nine Walt Disney World roller coasters across their four theme parks. Along the way, I'll be ranking them against each other so we can decide once and for all what the best roller coaster is in Walt Disney World. I'll be sharing tips and tricks on how to tackle these popular rides as we go, but we gotta get moving because I'm already running late. <laughs> well, we're starting today in somewhat of a panic because our first coaster we're gonna do is the newest one in Walt Disney World, Tron Light Cycle Run. This opened up just a few months ago, and it's very popular, as you can imagine. It's so popular that there's not even a standby queue. It runs on virtual queue or fancy ride only. So this morning at 7 a.m., I joined the virtual queue. I grabbed spot 10, and it told me that my callback time would be approximately 170 minutes, which by my math, which is arguably not great, is a little after 10 a.m. from the current time. So color me surprised when at 9 a.m. the park opened and it called me back. I was in my bathroom. I was, I was doing my hair. So I rushed as quickly as I could to get to Magic Kingdom and now I'm here a little bit late for my boarding group and we're gonna see if they let me on. There's no guarantee for sure, but we'll see what happens. Oh, starting in a panic. While I continue to work my way up, let's talk about Tron a little bit and that boarding group process. To ride Tron for free, you must join a boarding group. Boarding groups are released at 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. At 7 a.m., everyone in your group must have a Magic Kingdom Park reservation. And at 1 p.m., everyone in your group must be inside the Magic Kingdom. You can confirm your party up to an hour prior to those times, which I highly recommend doing. Make sure you've got everybody linked up, make sure everybody's park passes are the same. That way, right at the time of the drop, you're ready to go. My recommendation is have one phone with a world clock open, the other phone ready to go on the join virtual queue page. Then at the 5959, click refresh on that page and then click join queue. The buttons are gonna be in the same spot, so just click that two, three times, just spam that button, and then hopefully it will give you a virtual queue spot. It will then give you an estimated return time, which will update throughout the day as they figure out how the operation is going. And then when it's your turn, they will send you a push notification as well as update your boarding group screen. And you have a certain amount of time, usually an hour to get back to the attraction and tap in. And as a friendly reminder, virtual queue does not mean expedited queue. It just means that you have a spot on the attraction. Typically, even with a virtual queue, people are waiting 45 minutes to an hour to board. It's just giving you a spot. If you are not starting your day in Magic Kingdom or you don't want to risk gambling with the virtual queue, Tron is also a fancy ride, which means you can purchase individual access to the expedited queue called the Lightning Lane. You can do that if you're a Disney World Resort guest starting at 7 a.m. Non-resort guests can do that at time the park opens, which does mean non-resort guests run the risk of having them all be sold out by the time they're able to purchase them. As a friendly reminder, your order of operations in the morning, should you be trying to book multiple things, since so many things open up at 7 a.m., is first things first, your virtual queue, whether it be here at Try and Light Cycle Run or over at Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Number two should be your Genie Plus attraction. And number three, again, if you're a resort guest, your fancy rides. You can have multiple people logged into their accounts, all working on different things as well. Just make sure everybody's all linked up. But for example, Alan and I have done it before where he booked the virtual queue right at 7 a.m. I booked a different Genie Plus attraction right at 7 a.m. And we were able to secure both. A couple more details about Tron. It has a 4444 inch height requirement, and it is gonna put you on a light cycle, AKA a computer motorcycle, as you go on a ride through the grid. Now, the biggest concern a lot of folks had with Tron is the vehicle itself. It is a very unique vehicle in the way that you have to sit and position yourself, and it cannot accommodate all body types. So no matter what, my recommendation to you is come check out this test vehicle prior to riding the attraction. There will be nothing worse than waiting in an hour long return queue just to find out it's not gonna work for you or you're not comfortable. There are cast members here that can help. Now as an important note, there are coasters that have a modified, just a classic ride vehicle seat at the back of the train. So you can wait for those, but it's better to know that now going into the virtual queue as opposed to when you get up to the load area. 
people have asked me if there's a certain size that may not fit or a certain inches that may not fit a certain weight and no it's really based on how your weight is distributed everybody is different so if you're concerned i highly highly recommend checking out the test seat prior to boarding because uh, it's not a one size fits all situation great success initially when i tapped at the touch point it went blue which means no entry um, but i explained to the cast member that i was called back more than an hour before my uh, estimated time and i showed her the screenshots and i was very polite and she made an exception and allowed me in so as always be nice to cast members they hold all the power also please do not take this as me saying you can be late to your Tron return times. If you're in the park when it gets called, you should do your best to head over here as quickly as possible because they absolutely will turn you away. I've seen them turn away people before that are super, super late. But if you get in a situation that's unavoidable, be polite to the cast members, be nice to the cast members, and they may be able to make an accommodation. May. It took about 40 minutes and I'm finally inside, but you know what? I don't even care that it took that long. While I was waiting out there, Universal Orlando and Universal Hollywood announced that Stranger Things is getting a house at Halloween Horror Nights. I, I screamed in the queue. I'm so excited. That is for sure the coolest part of this queue. And if you do use the lightning lane, you don't skip that. So I would recommend using a lightning lane here uh, just because again, it's gonna take me probably an hour to get on this attraction. And you don't miss much because this queue beyond that reveal isn't super, super exciting. Um, I know lightning lanes cost money, so that can add up quick. But if you're debating between the two, I personally prefer a lightning lane here. It's been almost an hour in the queue and I'm almost to the lockers. Similar to roller coasters over at Universal, you have to put things in a locker prior to boarding. Things like backpacks, ears, glasses. There is a small compartment in the front of the light cycle that you can put things like phones, um, but the majority of your stuff needs to go in a locker and you need to remember which number you have because that's the one you're going to open up when you get back. complete from the time I got into the virtual queue to now it was an hour and 15 minutes so that's what I mean when I say that getting a virtual queue spot is not expedited you're still probably gonna wait I've waited at least 45 minutes every time I've done the virtual queue so just keep that in mind if you want an expedited wait again you're gonna have to purchase that fancy one now as we go throughout this adventure today I will be ranking all of the coasters on two different scales first of all the thrill scale how intense is this attraction? How does it stack up to the other thrills? Now keep in mind the thrill ranking is compared Disney to Disney. This is not thrills compared to Universal or Six Flags or Cedar Point or anywhere else where you may do more intense coasters. We're keeping it relative here. The second scale is the fun scale because just because it's thrilling doesn't mean it's a must do. There are things on this list that are gonna top the thrill list that maybe aren't so much of a must do. And there's things that are gonna rank lower on the thrills that you absolutely should put on your priority list. So where does Tron stack up on these scales of one to 10? I think Tron gets an eight on the thrill counter. Absolutely the most thrilling part of Tron is the launch. It goes zero to almost 60 miles an hour in just under three seconds, very similar to Rock and Roller Coaster. The main difference is you are exposed to the elements, you are outside going on that grid pattern. It is absolutely the best part of this attraction. Once you get inside though, the light cycles do slow down quite a bit. It's still really fun. The music is bumping. It is a very cool attraction in there where you've got all the lights and things going, but it's certainly not as thrilling as something like Rock and Roller Coaster. But on the fun scale, I'm gonna give it an eight. I do think Tron Light Cycle Run is very, very fun. I seem to enjoy it more every time I ride it because I can look around and notice new things, notice some of the cool effects. 
The thing about Tron Light Cycle Run is that it's incredibly short. It's only about a 70 second long attraction and it's kind of a hassle to ride. You either have to get that virtual queue or you have to purchase a fancy ride. So for some people it's not worth the hassle. But if you are a thrill seeker, if you are a Walt Disney World regular or frequent visitor, it's the newest attraction in Walt Disney World, you should check it out. And you should really check it out if you're a fan of the Tron IP. I've never seen Tron, but understanding the plot line of Tron, basically that you are in a death race with another group, did help me enjoy it more the first time. Although once I learned that the two teams that are racing against each other are essentially dragging a solid wall behind them, and if you crash into it, um, you explode and die, it made me feel differently about the end of this attraction. Not less fun, but different. And with that, we are off right next door, actually, to Space Mountain. From the newest roller coaster in park to the oldest roller coaster, headed on Space Mountain next. I love Space Mountain. This is the roller coaster that puts you inside a rocket ship and shoots you through the dark in outer space. It's got a 44, 44 inch height requirement and it is incredibly popular and it has been ever since it opened in 1975. Clearly I'm using a lightning lane here. I purchased Genie Plus for the day. The first thing I booked was Slinky Dog Dash over at Hollywood Studios. And the second thing I booked once that 120 minutes was up was Space Mountain. Now I did recently kick off a new Genie Plus series that breaks down Genie Plus with a lot more detail, uh, walks you step by step how to book things, when you can book things, and provides tips and tricks. I'm going to all four parks and then doing a park hopper edition uh, thanks to the new pricing structure to show you how much you can get out of your dollar. But let's just say that if you are purchasing Genie Plus, Space Mountain is a great use of a lightning lane. It has at least an hour long wait, but uh, we do not have an hour to wait for Space Mountain considering there are five roller coasters in this park. I've only done one and we've got to get to Epcot as soon as we can park up for my Guardian's Lightning Lane. Boss Mountain complete. Now, a little Space Mountain pro tip. It kind of has a single rider line. Everyone enters through the same place, but up at the top, when you touch the second tap point, if you let the cast member know that you are a solo rider, they'll route you around the rest of the folks waiting to board rockets, and then they'll fit you into a single seat. It probably saved me, I don't know, six, seven, eight minutes, which isn't a ton of time, and it's obviously more fun to ride with your friends and family that you came with, um, but if you're already alone, why not? But a lot of people don't realize you can do that. The moral of the story is I love Space Mountain. It's one of my favorite rides of all time. I think it is such an iconic Disney attraction, but it's not as thrilling as a lot of things we're gonna do today. On the Disney thrill counter, I'm giving Space Mountain a seven. I have a whole point lower than tried. For starter, Space Mountain doesn't even go 30 miles an hour. It goes just under 29 miles an hour, but it feels a lot faster because you're mostly in the dark. There's also not any big drops. There's not a big launch. However, being in the dark and not knowing where you're going is pretty thrilling. So I would say prior to Tron, this was definitely the most thrilling attraction in this park. And I still think it ranks in the upper half of Disney World roller coasters when it comes to thrill. But the fun scale, I gotta give it a nine. I think Space Mountain is so iconic. It's a must do when you're in this park. It's a classic for a reason. It's been beloved again since 1975. So Space Mountain should certainly be on your to-do list. Now, headed over to Storybook Circus. Gonna knock out Goofy's Barnstormer real quick. Yes, we're counting the Barnstormer today. And then it'll be time to visit the Seven Dwarves Mine. Welcome friends, we made it into Storybook Circus and more specifically, the Barnstormer featuring Goofy as the great Goofini. You are headed on an airplane with Goofy. You see here in Storybook Circus, all of our classic friends have taken on a role in the circus and Goofy is the great Goofini who flies. Somewhat unsuccessfully, but you know what he tries and that's what's important. Not using a lightning lane here because this attraction usually doesn't have very long lines. Even today is a very busy day in the middle of the summer. It only is a 15 minute wait. So if you see this attraction with a 45 minute wait or longer, you should wait a little bit because it will most likely drop throughout the day. This is basically your kid's first coaster. It's super duper short. It only has a 35 inch height requirement. It's just long enough to see if your kid likes roller coasters. And it's definitely not a must do for most people, but you know what? It's technically a roller coaster. So it's on our list today. 
After tapping in at Space Mountain, I booked a Big Thunder Round Railroad. The problem the next available time was 3.35, and I need to be long gone from this park by 3.35, so while I wait in my 15 minute queue here, I'm gonna do what I call the fiddle faddle, which is just refreshing this modify screen to see if a sooner time can come up. I saw 2.45 come up, which is definitely better. Train. I saw 2.45 come up, which is definitely better than 3.35, but still not soon enough for what we need. I'm hoping to get something before two o'clock. So I'm just gonna fiddle faddle for a little bit and hope to be successful. Stormer complete very cute ride took 15 20 minutes to get on it kids were enjoying themselves but how does it rank on our scales today as far as thrills go the barnstormer is a three it's 50 something seconds long it's very very short top speed 25 miles an hour it has a little whoosh moment for you it's it's definitely perfect to give kids a taste of what a roller coaster feels like but considering the other attractions we're gonna do today Think of the disparity. If I gave Tron an eight, this definitely needs to be knocked down. On the must-do scale, I'm gonna say for the average guest, a two. Obviously, if you've got little ones, this attraction is probably more of a priority for you. This is who this attraction was made for, and I absolutely recommend it if you've got kids, especially kids that don't know if they like roller coasters yet. But if you've got older kids, if you've got adults, this is definitely not a must-do for most people. If there's not a long line, it's fun. It's nostalgic for me because I've been riding it as a kid, but certainly not a must-do. Oh, and before we go into Senator's Mind Train, I'm going to give a very rare pro tip when it comes to doing Disney World with kids. I don't normally do these because I don't have kids. I don't navigate the parks with kids. I'm certainly not an expert at going to Walt Disney World with young children. That said, I used to work in attractions and I've been here long enough to know that you should never, ever, ever promise your kid that they're gonna be able to ride an attraction. That has a height requirement. Honestly, you probably shouldn't promise your kids any attractions just in case there's a, a downtime situation, but certainly do not promise your kids things with height requirements. The family behind me was looking at Tron. They were so excited for Tron. When I finally was able to see them, that kid is not gonna be able to ride Tron. He is way under the 44 inch height requirement. And I heard them hype up Tron for 15 minutes. That kid is gonna be crushed when they get to the attraction. And that makes me really, really sad. So know the height requirements for each of these attractions. You can find them easily on the app. I say them before each attraction. Know how tall your kid is and do not promise them anything that they are not gonna be able to ride or that they're close to not being able to ride. And on that note, as a safety thing, please do not be that family that tries to stuff your kid's shoes with something or make their hair tall. The height requirements are there for safety reasons. I assure you no attraction is worth faking your kid's height. But don't promise them anything because I'm just like now going to be a little sad for the rest of the day knowing that that little boy's not going to get to ride Tron. All right. And now we have asked to Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. My lightning lane is good for right now. Whilst waiting to board, Barnstormer, I was fiddle faddling for Big Thunder Mountain Railroad and I was able to get 225, still a little later than I want considering it's 1.30 right now. I'd love to be able to just hop on it immediately after mine train because we got to get to getting. I got got a few times by the genie, which is what I call it when you see a better time and you click it, but then by the time the screen loads, it's gone because someone else is faster than you. So I'm gonna keep fiddle faddling as I make my way to and I'm waiting in the lightning lane here at Mine Train. Other than that, Big Thunder might be putting us behind schedule. Seven Dwarves Mine Train has a 38 inch height requirement and it is a very cute attraction themed to Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. You are gonna board a mine car and visit the Dwarves Mine. It is so, so cute. It's part dark ride, part roller coaster. And what I love about it is that they created a new kind of technology for the cars. So they swing back and forth like mine cars, as well as going forward like a roller coaster. It is incredibly popular right now. It is an 85 minute wait, which is pretty typical. You very rarely see it under an hour. Um, and it is a fancy ride, meaning if you want to use the lightning lane and skip that long queue, you're going to need to purchase it separately. As a reminder, fancy rides are available for purchase at 7 a.m. if you are a Walt Disney World Resort guest, and at the time the park opens if you are not. 
I am obviously not a Walt Disney World Resort guest, so I was able to purchase it at 9 a.m. today, and I bought the earliest time available, which was 1240. Also note, you can only purchase two fancy rides per person per day, which is why I did not purchase Tron, because I wanted to skip the long line here, and uh, the only way I could get on Guardians since I wasn't starting in Epcot was to get a fancy ride for Guardians as well. Visited the mines with the dwarves, and you know, I gotta say, I love that attraction. Every time I ride it, I enjoy it more and more. I think it is so cute. I love the technology. I love the animatronics and the dark room scene. I just love that it goes like this. <sighs> but what to rate it, what to rate it. As far as the thrill ranking goes, now this one does go about 34 miles an hour, which is five miles an hour faster than Space Mountain. It's also about three minutes long, which is twice as long as Tron. Seven Dwarfs Mine Train thrill score, four. It's like your next step up from the Barnstormer. It's certainly not as thrilling as Space Mountain or Tron or some of the other ones we're gonna do today. On the must-do factor, I'm gonna give it an eight. I think this is as much of a must-do as Tron Light Cycle Run is um, for different reasons though. I think Tron is certainly more thrilling. It's the newest attraction in Walt Disney World. I love the takeoff and the seat's very unique and that grid part, especially at night, is incredible. But here it is a kick up from your classic Fantasyland ride. I love the darkroom scene. I love the way the ride vehicles work. The animatronics are great. So yes, this one's a fancy ride. Yes, this one has a long line as well, but it's a delightful attraction. All right, it is now two o'clock, which means I can park hop, but obviously, can't park out till I ride our fifth coaster here, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Currently, my lightning lane is in about 20 minutes, which is obviously not very long at all. I'm going to keep fiddle faddling though, just because any time saved is helpful when you have a Guardian's lightning lane that starts in 15 minutes. <laughs> it's fine. I did get got by the genie a few more times while waiting to board Seven Doors Mine Train. My phone is running incredibly slow right now because of how hot it is. Just as a friendly reminder, when it's warm, you're probably not going to be able to screen, see your screen very well and your phone may shut down because it's so warm. So just keep that in mind. Keep your phone cooled off just like you. Actual footage of my phone, which is not dead, has plenty battery of life and it just shut off. So the heat. Gave my phone some well-deserved air conditioning and now it's time to ride Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, our last coaster here in Magic Kingdom. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad has a 44 zero inch height requirement. It also is right now a 40 minute wait. It's always been popular, but it's certainly increased in popularity now that Splash Mountain, its next door neighbor, is closed to refurbishment to turn into Tiana's Bayou Adventure. So it's certainly a good use of a lightning lane. Otherwise, it's a good one to do it in the early parts of the day. When this park opens for early theme park admission for resort guests, only Fantasyland and Tomorrowland open. So if you are a non-resort guest, it's a smart idea to go Adventureland, Frontierland first, do Jungle and this, and then Pirates. Yep. All right, and now that I've tapped in here at the wildest ride in the wilderness, I can book another lightning lane. I already have Slinky Dog locked in. I already have Cosmic Rewind locked in, but again, is a fancy ride, which means I need to think about Expedition Everest at Animal Kingdom and Rock and Roller Coaster at Hollywood Studios. I'm gonna book Rock and Roller Coaster. Uh, both Rock and Roller Coaster and Expedition have single rider lines, which I will use. However, Rock and Roller Coaster sometimes isn't super fast. So I'm gonna book Rock and Roller Coaster, which is right now for 6.20 p.m. And then Fiddle Faddle, see if I can get it sooner. It just came on the loudspeaker to say that there's inclement weather approaching and if it gets closer, they'll have to close Big Thunder Mountain Roto because it's an outdoor attraction. the wildest ride in the wilderness. It gets me every time. I'm so glad the inclement weather did not impact it. And fingers crossed, it, it seems to have moved away, but it, it's Florida, so you never know. Oh my gosh, I love that attraction so much. Ooh, 
what do I rank it? What do I rank it? It's an easy 10 on the fun scale for me. I think this is absolutely a must do when you are in Magic Kingdom. Everybody on the attraction is laughing and screaming. It is just such a fun ride. Yes, 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 absolutely a must do. The thrill scale. I'm gonna give it a five. It's definitely a step up from Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and it's definitely a step down from Space Mountain. It does depend where you sit like most coasters. The front is much less thrilling than the back which allows you to whip around a little bit more. I personally love the back row. Uh, request it row 15 if you are riding. I didn't do that today because again, we're, we're moving quickly but absolutely a must do attraction. Super duper fun. And now we got a jet out of here because we got a date with the Guardians. All right, here's the current status. There's a pirate. Hello, Captain Jack. He is likely looking for rum. I have 45 minutes to get onto Guardians before my lightning lane expires. I also have a 310 to 410 Slinky Dog Dash, and I was able to fiddle faddle my rock and roller coaster from six something up to four o'clock. So I am scurrying to the front of the park to get on the monorail, to get to Epcot, because I parked at Epcot, so I didn't want to park at the TTC. Because the TTC is my least favorite attraction at Walt Disney World. <laughs> because I knew I was ending up at Epcot anyway. And all the while, I need to pray to the rain gods that a thunderstorm doesn't come in, in classic Florida style, somehow, and ruin my plans for Slinky Dog Dash, Expedition Everest. Epcot with five minutes to spare, so walking V quickly to Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, and then we will V quickly be making a U-turn and back to my car to get over to Hollywood Studios. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is a fancy ride and has a virtual queue just like Tron, which once again means if you want to ride it, you either need to join that virtual queue at 7 a.m. or 1 p.m., but this time you either need to have an Epcot reservation at 7 a.m. or be in Epcot at 1 p.m or purchase that fancy ride. Obviously, I was not in Epcot at 1 p.m., so I bought a fancy ride, and I'm gonna hope that I get Conga, which I know is not the number one favorite song. That's probably September by Earth, Wind & Fire, which I would agree is the best song you can get on Guardians of the Randomly Chosen Six. However, it's been a while since I've heard Conga, and I, I think that the high, high energy beat will be a good motivator to keep going with this challenge throughout the day. Now, unlike Tron, the queue here at Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is really cool. And especially if you're a Guardians fan, there are tons of Easter eggs for Guardians and old school Epcot. It also tends to move much faster than Tron. Unless there's been a long downtime throughout the day, you're usually on within 30 minutes in the virtual queue here. So I do recommend using that virtual queue if you're having an Epcot day, or you could do both and ride twice if you wanna try and get two different songs which means, yes, you can purchase both a fancy ride and join a virtual queue for the same attraction, but you can't join both virtual queues. It's also worth noting that both Tron and Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind have an extra 6 p.m. drop for the nights that they have extended evening hours for DVC and Deluxe Resort guests. Only those guests are eligible for it, but just keep that in mind as well if you are taking advantage of that perk. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind has a 42, 42-inch height requirement. It's the newest ride here at Epcot, and it puts you into the action with all of your favorite Guardians, Star-Lord, Gamora, Drax, Groot, Rocket, and it's awesome. It is very, very awesome. Where will it stack up, though? It's kind of a hard one to figure out, so we'll see. And you're likely to do it. Drax! You are! You get a need. No one's gonna stop rock and roll from existing. Drax, it's an honorary title. They're not coming with us. I see. Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic Rewind complete. That is such a fun attraction. First of all, I got Disco Inferno, which, you know what? That one's great too. It really was a vibe. Now, where do I rank this? 
It's definitely a 10 as far as the fun scale goes. That is such an awesome attraction. It does make a good amount of people motion sick. I've never had a problem with that, but keep that in mind, it does give a lot of people the swirly, so you may want to save it to the end of the day um, or just don't eat anything right beforehand. For thrill, I'm going 8.5. I do think it's more thrilling than Tron. They both reach top speeds of 60 miles an hour, though I think you feel it a little more on Tron because you are launched quickly and are outside in the elements, but here you're launched backwards. This is also about three and a half minutes long, which is over twice as long as Tron. You've got a good amount of the stomach in your throat feeling as you go around those curbs. Even though there's not a big drop or anything, I still think it's more thrilling than Tron, but still not as thrilling as some of the ones we have left here at Walt Disney World. Speaking of the ones we've left here at Disney World, we are running very, very close for our Slinky Dog Lightning Lane, so let's get to Hollywood Studios. for Hollywood made it to park number three cutting it very close for our slinky dog dash lightning lane so now I'm dog dashing to Toy Story Land as fast as I can walk there made it to Andy's backyard scurrying to slinky dog dash I really do love this land it is so so cute look there's Woody and Jesse now slinky dog dash this is the first lightning lane I booked right at 7 a.m. As a friendly reminder, you can book your first lightning lane in a park you're not starting at, but it has to be a return time that's after 2 p.m. because that's when park hopping is allowed. But with attractions like Slinky Dog Dash, as well as Remy's Ratatouille Adventure at Epcot, it usually only takes a few minutes for them to become after a 2 p.m. return time. So I still try right at 7, and if it says it's not ready yet, I give it like 30 seconds and try again. You're still going to want to be quick. Slinky Dog Dash has a 38 inch height requirement, 3.8. Slinky Dog Dash is incredibly popular. It has an 80 minute standby wait right now, which is very typical for this attraction. Definitely a good one to use Genie Plus on. This should be your first choice of Lightning Lane if you're doing Hollywood Studios or perhaps hopping into Hollywood Studios. Definitely consider booking this one first. That Genie Plus series I was mentioning, the first episode I did was here at Hollywood, so you can check that out to see how to maximize Genie Plus in this park in particular. Woo! is oh so cute but where to rank it as far as the thrills go putting it halfway between big thunder mountain railroad and seven dwarves mine train i think it's more thrilling than seven dwarves mine train it hits speeds of up to 40 miles an hour the launch is more exciting there's a couple good loop-de-loops it is short it's only two minutes long but it's a really fun attraction so yeah i think it's between those two as far as fun goes, I'm going to give it an 8. I think this is a really, really cute attraction. And if you take away how long and hot the queue can be, I think it's a fan favorite. I think it's a really good family coaster, which is what most people are looking for at Walt Disney World. I think generally for people, this is a must do. And the reason that they don't ride it is because of how long the queue is. Uh, but generally speaking, I think this is a great attraction. One more here, let's go see Steven Tyler. Made it down Sunset Boulevard, turning into the Rock and Roller Coaster Courtyard. And I have terrible news, Expedition Everest is currently closed and has no more lightning lanes. And it's not because of weather, because other outdoor attractions there are open. So I'm now concerned about that. But I'm gonna put that concern, put a pin in that and uh, Go have fun on Rock and Roller Coaster because maybe by the time I get to Animal Kingdom, it will have reopened. Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith presented by Haynes. Actually, I don't think it's presented by Haynes anymore. It doesn't say it on the pick over there anymore, but it used to be. It is incredibly popular, especially because it was down for a long refurbishment earlier this year and just recently came back up. Curly has a 75 minute wait. Rock and Roller Coaster has the tallest height requirement of any roller coaster on our list, 48 inches. 
and highly recommend using a lightning lane here, especially because recently their single rider line has been closed. This is a good, what I call tier two lightning lane at this park. I would say tier one is Slinky Dog, and then tier two is Rock and Roller Coaster, Tower of Terror, followed by Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. The story of Rock and Roller Coaster is that you are going on a tour of G-Force Records. When you come across a live band in the recording studio, known for their hit song, Don't Wanna Miss a Thing, from the 1998 cinematic masterpiece, Armageddon, Aerosmith. Aerosmith's manager kicks them out of the recording studio so they can go to their concert, but they want to take you with them. So they call a stretch, wait a minute, better make that a super stretch, limo to take you across town, beat the traffic, and go to the Aerosmith concert. Rock and roller coaster check. I haven't been on that one in a while since it was down for refurbishment. Man, that one is good. That is so good. On the thrill level, I think you gotta give that a 10. As far as Walt Disney World roller coasters go, that is the most intense one. It's the only one that goes upside down. You got that zero to just under 60 miles per hour launch in about three seconds. Very similar to Tron, but you immediately go into a course crew, double upside down, weave around a bit, and then you hit another upside down. As far as the attractions I've done today, that one is the one that most has that stomach in your mouth feeling. It is so much fun. As far as the must ride score goes, I'm gonna give it a nine. I think this is such a fun attraction. I have a great time every time I ride it. It's not super duper long. It's about 90 seconds long, which is longer than Tron. Um, but I think the theming is more fun than Tron. I love the music. I love the rewrite ability of not knowing which Aerosmith song you're gonna get. I got Love in a Roller Coaster, which is my favorite one. I have a blast every time I ride this attraction. So I don't think it's a hard 10 like Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, but I absolutely think it's a great coaster. Now, on to Animal Kingdom where Everest is still close, but we're gonna go there and hope it reopens. Y'all, you're not gonna believe this. Expedition Everest has been down for a couple hours at this point. I've been keeping an eye on it since Hollywood Studios. It's been down the entire time. Stopped to get a coffee on the way here. Still down to the point where I was walking into the park and at security opened my Disney experience and I got a push notification apologizing for the fact that Expedition Everest was down. But I was coming into the park just to film a I failed but here would be my score anyway moment and I just happened to check the app again. There are like 30 minutes of park time left and it just reopened. Let's go right over us. I cannot believe they reopened it. And not only did Expedition Everest reopened, they added more lightning lanes. I went to check just to make sure my eyes had not deceived me after seeing that purple exclamation point for so long. And it said there were a few lightning lanes left for the end of the evening. So I snagged one, which is great because normally right now it would be a walk-on and it might be, but it's got a posted 30 minute wait, which is probably because it's been down for a while. So I'm sure a lot of people want to ride it before they leave. Expedition Everest, Legend of the Forbidden Mountain TM is one of my favorite rides in all of Walt Disney World. It is so much fun. It has a 44, 44 inch height requirement. And on this attraction, you are going with Himalayan Escapes Expedition Company to journey with some old tea trains up Everest and the Forbidden Mountain when you come face to face with the legendary Yeti. Things I love about this attraction, the detail, the backstory, the fact that this is the last Disney World attraction that is not attached to IP. They should make a movie out of this one. I don't know, get Jason Momoa in it. He's everywhere right now. We love Jason Momoa. Get him in an Expedition Everest movie. I would watch it. Let me know if you would down in the comments. There we go, last Disney World coaster. Little fun fact, when you go through the uh, Fast Pass queue, you've already booked your ticket. So you see the booking office and then you're off to grab your supplies. When you go through the standby queue, you have to go through the travel agent office because you've got to book your ticket. Here we are grabbing our supplies, which a lot of the stuff in the queue is actually from the real Everest. There's a group of people that hike up Everest every single year to collect things uh, that other hikers leave behind. It's a group of locals to make sure it doesn't damage the wildlife and damage the mountain. Can you imagine just casually hiking up Everest as your job? I cannot. But if you like that kind of detail, you want to know more, you want to know about the incredible backstory of Everest, definitely watch our secret series. 
the Animal Kingdom episode where I talk about all the backstory and details and everything that went into this attraction, and I think you'll love it even more. attractions fun real quick before I give my Everest rankings and final review there's this new merchandise collection for Expedition Everest look at this Yeti lounge fly it is so cute the theme is Yeti ski school I'm using every ounce of willpower I have not to buy it because I do not need new mugs but there's a, a pullover with the Yeti skiing on it there's the lounge fly there's the spirit jersey a flat bell hat this is cute blanket of like a, a long john henley button down a couple t-shirts if they make ears with this game over oh man that attraction is so fun i'm so glad it reopened that was way more fun than just talking about it with whole b-roll for thrill i'm gonna give it a 9.5 half a point lower than rock and roller coaster you don't go upside down and this one tops out about 50 miles an hour versus rock and roller coaster 60. however one it feels like you go upside down at one point the g-forces are pretty intense when you shoot backwards which backwards in of itself is quite thrilling uh when i was younger the first few times i rode this attraction i swore you went upside down when you go into the mountain you don't when i was a cast member i got to ride this and see the track and walk up to the top of the mountain with the lights on the track doesn't go upside down but it really feels intense and you get that stomach whoop and even a kid when i was getting off was like mom i swear we went upside down so it feels like you go upside down even though you don't technically it is one of the tallest attractions in walt disney world this and tower of terror stand both a few inches taller than 199 feet tall so certainly the tallest thing we've ridden today it also is the biggest drop of anything we rode today with an 80 foot drop coming out of the mountain and then you've got those 50 degree turns i mean this one along with rock and roller coaster have your stomach in your mouth feeling it is an awesome attraction I actually think this is my favorite roller coaster in Walt Disney World, having ridden them all today. I think I like this more than Cosmic Rewind, which is not surprising now that I'm gonna tell you the fun scale, it's a hard 10. This is an awesome attraction. From the Imagineering details and the backstory and the hidden gems throughout the attraction to the ride itself, the drop, the going backwards, the broken track, even the broken Yeti, it's an amazing attraction. It's Disney Imagineering at its finest, so definitely a hard 10 when it comes to the fun scale. Which means if you total up our fun scale and our thrill scale to get a ranking of these nine roller coasters, Expedition Everest comes out on top as number one, followed by Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith and then Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. If you're just looking at the must-do factor, I had three marked as a hard 10. Again, Expedition Everest, Legend of the Forbidden Mountain TM, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. But you know what? I gotta know what's your favorite roller coaster in Walt Disney World. Do you think these rankings are accurate? Are they fair? Definitely let us know all of that down in the comments. What other kind of challenges do you want to see? Let us know that as well. Should we do a coaster throwdown at Universal or a thrill ride throwdown at Universal? Share all that down below in the comments. Make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, come hang out with us in Discord. And until next time, I'm Molly and it has been so magical. Bye!